I'd like to call the December Cosin City School Board meeting to order. And uh, Sophie, take it away, please. Harris Cottingham will lead us in the pledge. He is the son of Kelly and John Cottingham. He is in Mrs. Atwood's kindergarten class, and his favorite subject is playing intervention games. Harris loves to ride bikes with his dad. Please say for pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> that was the longest, most enthusiastic pledge I've ever been a part of. You guys did a great job. Andrea Wilder will provide the inspirational reading. Andrea is also a student in Mrs. Atwood's kindergarten class. Andrea is the daughter of Marie Collins and, Dr and Andre Wil Wilder. She loves to get on the computer and play games. Andrea's favorite subject in school this year is literacy. She will read lyrics from the, a song by Jill Jackson Miller and Cy Miller titled, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let There Be Peace on Earth by Jill Jackson Miller and Cy Miller. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment with peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Very nice. Uh, next up is our student presentation. And students, uh, if you could please stay for a few minutes after you complete your presentation. Uh, we're going to take a short break so that we can come out and talk with you. Uh, our student presentation tonight is The Reindeer Pokey by Miss Atwood's <coughs> kindergarten class from Pocosin Primary School. They're under the direction of Mrs. Poto. Ms. Atwood's class just finished performing this song along with other kindergarten classes last evening when they presented their holiday concert. And parents, just an FYI, this presentation will be on the website so you can send that link out to other family and friends.
Very well done, boys and girls. <laughs> did a great job. Thank you very much, Ms. Atwood and Ms. Poto. Uh, do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We do not this evening. Thank you. Next, I would like to call up uh, Ms. McCormick from the Coast and Education Foundation, as well as Dr. Cataldo. Good evening. My name is Judy McCormick, and I am the president of the Pocosin Education Foundation. And Steve was so worried about the stool back here that the children used. But the older I get, the shorter I get. So maybe next year, if I come back, I'll have to use the stool as well. <laughs> <clears throat> Ms. Poto, your kids did a great job. I don't know where you are. I can't find you, but a super duper. There you are. Super duper. You guys were terrific. I'll bet Santa Claus is going to come visit every one of you, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm here um, to make a fantastic presentation, but before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about the Pocosin Education Foundation. We are a fundraising group here in Pocosin um, for the Pocosin school system. We um, have two major events every year. One is in October, and hopefully some of you have participated in our 5K run, our two-mile walk. And this year, it was our second annual, and we raised, after expenses, um, we cleared about $19,000. So I can't tell you how wonderful that is. There's another event that's held in March at the Pocosin Yacht Club, and it's kind of a gala affair. We have um, wonderful food, and we have um, a silent auction, a live auction, and the theme last year was um, Las Vegas, and this year it's gonna be some kind of um, casino event with palm trees and everything else. So it sounds like it's going to be a fun time. That event raised after expenses last year $20,000. So we can thank you, the citizens and residents of Pocosin, the businesses of Pocosin, who when we knock on your doors, you say yes to sponsorships, yes to donations, yes to raffle items. We cannot thank you enough because without you, we couldn't do much for the school system. Now what we do with the money we raise is we have um, classroom grants for teachers. Um, you know, the school board used to fund some of this, but with all the drastic budget cuts, unfortunately, um, that's one of the things that had to go. So it was perfect timing for us to get in gear and do what we could to help the teachers, to enhance their teaching um, curriculum and to make it a little more fun for the students in the process. And then we, get, we give scholarships to students, graduating seniors every year. And um, I can tell you how much we, <clears throat> we did last year. Uh, since 2010, we have given $83,500 in PEF and PEF managed scholarships to graduating seniors from the high school. Um, we have given $78,045 in teacher classroom grants and $8,100 in student grants. And as I said, it's all because of the people in this community. I worked in the system for 26 years and I cannot tell you how proud I am to be able to say that. And if you parents, most of you are young parents, if you don't know how wonderful this system is yet, hopefully as your kids progress through the system, you will feel the way I do, that it is one of the best school systems in the country. We have some of the best teachers in the country, and we all need to feel really proud and feel very fortunate to live in Pocosin and to have Dr. Parrish as our leader. She is absolutely phenomenal. So um, that's why we're here, to talk about PEF. And because we had some money, <clears throat> Dr. Perry said um, the high school needed some iPads. And she was able to get some money somewhere, I don't know where. And she said if we could match it, they would buy the school board would buy 30 new iPads for the high school. And if we could match it, we would contribute 30 iPads. And together, the high school will get 60 iPads. So I am here to present to Dr. Michael Cataldo a check. Of course, this is the 
fake check <laughs> for $11,370 from the Wapakosan Education Foundation to help fund uh, 30 iPads in some mysterious place. Dr. Perich was able to get another $11,370, and so together we can buy 60 iPads for the high school students. So. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. McCormick, um, we, the board, and everybody in Pocosin can't say enough about what Pocosin, uh, Pocosin PEF does for, uh, uh, for the community. Um, with that being said, yes, the community does give, but it takes somebody like you with a vision and the initiative and the drive and the organizational skills to pull those things together uh, to get those funds. And the, the students are a uh, direct recipient of that. And they're the ones who benefit. And I know you know that. And that's what keeps you motivated. But uh, on behalf of the board, I would really like to thank uh, the Coastal Education Foundation. So thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, with that, we will take a brief intermission. <laughs>
Those are the days. Hey, hi, You're Jordan. welcome. Thank you. Uh, the loneliest You're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks for coming. My only yeah. so we do have an audience of millions internationally. Yeah. 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 China everywhere. <laughs> All right. Next up is our presentations and reports, and we'll kick that off with a financial update from Mr. Bowen. Good evening, Dr. Carter, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. Uh, let me begin my finance report this evening with uh, presenting you with the results of our 2014 annual audit. On the dais, you have um, two audit reports. Um, the first is the comprehensive financial report. Um, and for reporting purposes, the financial data for the city and the school division are included together. Let me direct you, though, to the last page, the very last page of the document. Um, it's page 108, uh, and this is the results of the, of the audit. And I'm pleased to report that there were no material weaknesses or significant, significant deficiencies identified, nor any findings or question costs related to our federal programs. So this is an excellent audit report, one of the best that you can get, or the best that you can get. The second audit report is a report on school activity funds. This, uh, this report here. Um, each school has an activity account, and it's used to deposit the proceeds from things like fundraisers, uh, field trips, and student clubs and organizations. These accounts are managed at the school level and are audited every year. Again, I am pleased to report that there were no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies identified in this audit. So while I deliver this great news, um, I can't take credit for it. These excellent audit reports are the results of the hard work of all PCPS employees. In particular, I would like to thank the school bookkeepers, the principals and assistant principals, my finance staff, Dr. Colley, Dr. Cataldo, Dr. Feldman, and Mr. Pappas. To all, I say thank you for the excellent work that you do on behalf of PCPS. On the subject of budget, in November, the General Assembly held a special ses session to consider changes to the FY 2015 budget. And as I mentioned in my November report, K-12 education was not expected to be impacted. The most likely scenario that we would see would be um, a fund switch uh, that would occur out of any legislative action. So we would possibly see a shifting, uh, an increase in lottery fund revenues and a decrease in general fund revenues to offset that increase. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. In February, the, the General Assembly and the Governor approved an increase in lottery and littering <coughs> fund appropriations of uh, $43.1 million and a uh, corresponding decrease in general fund revenues of that same amount. And what we'll see, as if you recall the, the calc tool that I showed you in November, there were um, textbook funds and summer remedial funds in the SOQ funding uh, category. Those, those uh, specific funding uh, funds will be shifted to now lottery dollars. For 2016, the governor releases his proposed budget for 2016 in the morning. We're anxious, anxiously awaiting to see if his proposals uh, include any cuts to K-12 education. Um, as soon as we know that information, any impact to K-12 education, and sp more specifically PCPS, we will share that information with the board. And that concludes my report this evening. Thank you. Does anybody have questions or comments there? <laughs> So the net increase slash decrease to funding um, was zero based on, you said there was an increase in the lottery funding, but it was offset by a decrease in the general fund revenue? Correct. There was no net loss of funding in 2015. The, the General Assembly just appropriated more lottery uh, revenue, proceeds from lottery fund, and literary fund revenues, and then offset that increase with a cut in general fund revenue. So they just did a fund switch. Has anybody, has anybody seen anything publicized uh, where the state uses the increase in lottery funds um, uh, to show that they're increasing funding of public education? Okay. 
All right. Anybody else? Questions? Thank you, sir. And Mr. Pappas with the operations update. <coughs> Good evening, Chairman Carter, School Board, Dr. Parrish. Well, as we all know, the break is close upon us, and everyone, students and staff, are looking forward to it. We, too, in maintenance, are looking forward to it. And custodial services, it gives us a great opportunity to get in and do a bunch of things while the space is less occupied. In the area of maintenance, we're also going to be conducting our annual fire inspections in all four schools over the break. Per Virginia code, we have to complete two lockdown drills, one in September and one in January in all, all four schools. Those dates have already been selected by principals. The police department's on board. We'll be conducting those upon return. In the area of food service, we are currently working through the off-site, their off-site, we're on-site, federal food service program review. It used to happen once every five years, now it happens once every three years. So they've sent us down a myriad of documents and paperwork we have to fill out, respond before we leave for break. They take that back, assess it, and then they come down the last week of January and for the week that they're here, they're looking at everything they saw and then looking to see that we're doing it and check everything that we do within the food service program. Staff have already been involved in phone interviews and we are preparing for the on-site visit. In the area of maintenance, staff will utilize the break to facilitate important and pre preventative maintenance activities such as the big air conditioning chiller and water tower that allows us to air condition in the high school, it's a great time for us to break it down, clean it, and put it all back together. And then lastly, I'd just like to mention that working with IT, <coughs> maintenance now has the ability to remote into the schools, even from home when there's a problem and we hear about it, saves us maybe from having to come out. We can quickly grab our computer, look into the computing system that controls the heating, ventilation, and in some cases, lighting at the high school, middle, and elementary school. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Questions? Yeah, I have one. You said uh, they come and they inspect for the food service. I said, who is the they? Uh, it's a federal review, and the Department of Education actually sends down individuals that have been specially trained from Virginia to do a thorough analysis of everything from menus, recipes, production sheets, compliance with nutritional guidelines, uh, free and reduced, uh, the full gamut. Thank you. And you're having to do that now every three years as opposed to every five years? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, anybody else have? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Pappas, and uh, thanks to the food service workers and the custodial staff for all they do. Uh, Ms. Colley, with the instructional update. I apologize, Dr. Colley. It's all good. Uh, you earned it. Good evening, Dr. Carter, members of the board, and Dr. Parrish. Um, I have the fun stuff tonight, I think. I get to share some of the great things our students are doing uh, in our schools. We take seriously the mission to help our students participate and contribute meaningfully in the community and the world they live in. And during this season of Giving and Thanksgiving, it seems fitting to share some of the service projects that our students are doing as part of their curricula and then outside of school as well. And our youngest students know that you're never too young to learn what service is all about. At the primary school, students in every grade have been making cards throughout the school year to send to the troops overseas. Beginning in January, the students at the primary school may also donate 25 cents on Fridays to wear a hat during the school day. And the funds they collect will be donated to Sew for Comfort. And this is an organization that provides free adaptive clothing and comfort accessories to all wounded service members from all branches of the military. 
At the elementary school, students begin participating in clubs with a service-oriented focus. And some examples include the Cake Kids, and they participated in a special trick-or-treat collection for UNICEF this year. The art club students participated in a service project called Empty Bowls to raise money for the Peninsula Food Bank. Students made clay bowls that were painted, fired, and then available for parents and staff to bid on in hopes of winning one of them. And the elementary school SCA sold candy grams this fall to collect money and held a, also held a food drive for PAWS, a local shelter for homeless cats. Service at the middle school is also evident through the clubs. Students in the SCARE Club, and that stands for Students Concerned About Restoring the Environment, have recycled 168 large garbage bags full of recyclables, and they've also recycled 142 boxes this year. The Builders Club is also busy. They donated $200 to Heifer International to provide the following to people in need around the world. A pig, a flock of ducks, a share of rabbits, and a hope basket, which provides eggs and protein for nourishment and boosts income through the sale of the extra eggs and offspring. As part of the Kiwanis Club Empty Stocking Fund, the Builders Club members filled 11 giant holiday stockings for children in need this month, and they plan to do a collection of items for the SPCA in the spring. Students in the National Junior Honor Society at the middle school are sponsoring the Holiday Pet Contest, and the proceeds will benef benefit Relay for Life. In the spring, these same members will bake treats for a bake sale to benefit Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and Cleats for Honduras. The middle school SCA participated in a food drive recently to help our local parish thrift store's pantry. They collected 834 items of food in only eight days. At Pocosin High School, the FCA collected 55 boxes for Operation Christmas Child to add to the Hampton Roads area collection of over 17,000 boxes. The Leo Club worked a car wash to provide funds to maintain and enhance Kids Island, and members also participated in the Diabetes Walk at York High School and raised over $900 for diabetes research. They've also prepared a holiday food basket for a family in the Transitions Program, and this is a program that aids families seeking to escape domestic violence. The Key Club has also been very busy at Pocosin High School this fall. So far, they have worked two car washes to earn money to support maintenance of Kids Island, helped with parking at all the schools back to school nights, provided childcare at the primary school for back to school night, served as road marshals and water stop helpers at the PEF run for the Bulls in October, provided concessions for sporting events and at the Seafood Festival, helped the Pocosin Museum with Haunts of Pocosin, and served two Saturdays bell ringing for the Salvation Army. They're also not out of school on Friday because they're planning to come back this Saturday and work at the Christmas house. So um, that's the key club. And I'll close out with our Teens for Troops Club because they sponsored Cookies Because We Care recently. This service project involves students and staff at all four of our schools and the school board office baking cookies for our local troops. This year, we had a total of 11,604 cookies. That is 967 dozen to donate to the Langley Officers Spouses Club. This brings Pocosin's nine-year total donation of cookies to 106,620 cookies for our local troops, and I'm sure that they will appreciate these home-baked goods. So these, and I had to cut this down, these examples are just a sampling of the many service projects that our schools are participating in this year. I think it's very clear that our students are becoming very civic-minded citizens, and I hope the board and the community will join me in commending them for their efforts to connect what they're learning in school to the community and to the world around them. And that include, concludes my update for the evening. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions, comments there? Breathtaking. Yeah. That was a long list, and I'm very proud Paul. of our <laughs> students and teachers. Yes. Yeah. Did you say the Heifer? Heifer International. Heifer International. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they now they purchase these animals to give. Is that right? Ooh, or they? They do. They 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 raise money and then they purchase the 
different animals and they know exactly which community it's going into and how it will support and sustain. Okay, that's interesting. Somebody, who's, did somebody, heard, have you heard of that before? Okay. Very worthwhile organization. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Cass, could you take us through the consent agenda, please? Sure. The consent agenda tonight includes the following four items that have been enclosed in the board packet. Approval of financial reports. Approval of personnel action. Authorization to dispose of surplus property. And authorization to change appropriations in accordance with the attached request. Thank you, sir. Do I have a motion to approve this consent agenda? So moved. And the second? Second. And could you call for a vote, please, Ms. Reimers? Mm -hmm. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hawks? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Vote is passed, seven to zero. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, other matters for consideration. First is approval of the minutes of the special meeting from December 10th, which is enclosed. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. And the second? Second. Would you call for a vote, please? Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hawks? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Abstain. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Uh, the vote, motion is pa vote is passed, six, one abstention. Thank you. And next is approval of the minutes of the November regular meeting and work session, which was enclosed. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. And the second? Second. And could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The vote is passed seven to zero. Thank you. And next up, there is a resolution concerning the funding of public education in Virginia uh, that we need to discuss. Um, and it's kind of lengthy. I've trimmed it down some, but I still think there are some uh, highlights here, some things that need to be said. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit some of those. Uh, this is a proclamation it says whereas the general assembly shall provide for a system of free public e elementary and secondary schools for all children of school age throughout the commonwealth and shall seek to ensure that an educational program of high quality is established and continually maintained and that is from the virginia constitution article 8 section 1. Uh, the general assembly determines the manner in which funds are to be provided for the cost of maintaining an educational program meeting the prescribed standards of quality. Article 8, Section 1 of the Constitution of Virginia states that uh, the Board of Education and the General Assembly uh, find that the quality of education is dependent upon the provision of the appro an appropriate work environment, benefits and salaries necessary to ensure the availability of high quality instructional personnel, the appropriate learning environment designed to promote student achievement, quality instruction that enables each student to become a productive and educated citizen of Virginia and the United States of America, and the adequate commitment of other resources in, in keeping with this goal, the General Assembly shall provide for the support of public education. Uh, we are simply, this proclamation is simply asking the state to meet its responsibilities that they have outlined. Uh, K-12 funding reductions have reduced K-12 funding from 35% of the general fund in fiscal year 2009 to below 30% in 2014. Uh, reductions have been carried out through damaging policy changes quite often. Uh, since fiscal year 2009. The voters of Virginia in 1987 approved the establishment of a state-operated lottery for the purpose of providing funding for public education and further approved a Virginia constitutional amendment in 2000 which required lottery proceeds to be distributed to localities to spend for public education purposes. 
Instead of providing additional resources for public education, however, 100% of lottery proceeds now supplant rather than augment general fund revenues for, uh, to support public education. And we just heard Mr. Bowen allude to that just a few minutes ago. Localities have paid for the increased cost of education required by state mandates. Often these mandates are unfunded. Localities budgeted $3.55 billion in fiscal year 2013 above their state required local effort to maintain the actual cost of public education. The number of at-risk students in Virginia schools has significantly increased to the point where more than one-third of K-12 students are now free lunch eligible and 7% are now reduced price lunch eligible, thereby increasing the need for more personnel and material resources to help them. We believe our state's future prosperity relies on a high quality education system. Now, therefore be, therefore, be it resolved that the Coastal City School Board and its division superintendent in conjunction with the Virginia School Boards Association and the Virginia Association of School Superintendents call upon the Virginia General Assembly to immediately increase the state's share of funding for public education to the level of quality that is prescribed by them in the standards of quality and expected by all of the Commonwealth citizens. Now that's a mouthful and typically with these resolutions I will uh, hit just a few highlights. Um, but with this one there was so much in here and I, I think it's come to a point where uh, it, we need to be shouting basically and trying to get their attention because they are defunding us right into You've seen the program cuts. Um, we're not able to offer each year some of the courses that these students need to take um, that fits their schedule nicely. Uh, they're having to wait a year to take, for example, AP, chemistry, those type courses. Um, we have cut the career and occupational education courses that we offer here on site at the school at, with the school system. Um, that is primarily done now through New Horizons. Uh, staff has been cut. Um, so the proclamation, I'm interested to hear what anyone else has to say about it. Well, Before Chairman I, Carter, I, yes, it's, it's a shame that we have to uh, put out a resolution asking uh, the legislature and our elected uh, folks to do what they already said they would have to outline, they would outline to do. So you're right, we need to shout. And uh, this is, I guess, our organized shout. It is a shame that it's come to this, but, you, but uh, this is a good resolution. I, personally, I think it outlines, uh, I, I like the fact, first of all, that it outlines from the Virginia Constitution what is required of the government to provide for public education. Um, and it goes on to say, basically, you're not doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing for public education. And we're feeling it. Every time we go in there, every time budget year comes up, uh, these people <laughs> are, are struggling to where can I cut now? And uh, it, it needs to end. Our students deserve much more than what the state of Virginia is offering them in the way of uh, public K through 12 education. I know I'm technically not a member, but I'll tell you as someone who spends seven hours at least a day in that school, it's critical that people realize we have four years to get into college. I mean, we have four years to take as many AP classes as we can, which means that the more that are offered, I promise you, there will be kids taking it. And I promise you that the more you offer, the more kids will take them. My sister's at Notre Dame, and when she got there, all of her friends there were shocked to see that she made it out of public education and into an elite private school. So I think that really speaks well for Pocosin, because we have 
kids getting into amazing schools, and the only way we can keep that happening is if they can take the courses that they're currently able, if not in the past, more able to take. So that's me. Thank you, Sophie. Mr. Chairman, sir, can you share, um, especially with the people at home where, who drafted this, and maybe Dr. Parrish, I don't know how many other jurisdictions have adopted this resolution, so we're not the only ones doing this. No, this was actually um, drafted um, in concert with the um, Virginia School Boards Association, of which you all are a member, as well as the Virginia Association of School Superintendents, of which I am a member. Our hope is that 132 school divisions will pass it. That's how many we have in the state. I don't have the number to date that have passed it, but um, within the first week of it being um, sent to school boards, at least 10 school divisions had passed it because they happen to have meetings that first week. So I anticipate that we'll see a large percentage of school boards passing it. We, I know some in our um, area have. I believe Chesapeake did that a week ago. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm thinking we'll see more and more of this rolling across the state as boards have school board meetings. And, and I also would like to just say that there are many of our um, senators and delegates that are in agreement with us, and I definitely don't want this to be an adversarial type thing, that it's, it's, it's more of a harmonious type thing, because I believe um, it's being well received by especially some of our local delegates that I've talked to that that we're all in one accord across the, the state trying to just get it back to the levels where uh, we can continue to do the good work that we can do because we cannot continue on the path that we're on without making some really, really drastic cuts that, that we've already made some some really significant cuts already over the last four or five, six years. So, but. Uh, to those delegates and centers out there that are, are going to bat for us, thank you, and uh, we, we appreciate everything that you're doing, and, and please call upon us if you need us. Anybody else? It's open for discussion. The one point that always uh, <laughs> sticks out in my mind is the bullet that Dr. Parrish has on a lot of her presentations that says uh, the state spends more to take care of its criminals than it does its children and um, that that should resonate with people and we're asking for community help you're gonna have to call your legislatures um, uh, write them letters email them the I know it takes time and uh, but American Idol will still be on when you're done. I promise. Get it on a commercial break or something like that. But but do it. Let them know that that we're done, and they need to uh, start shuttling some money back our way so that we can continue to send our kids to elite private universities, very well prepared to be successful, and go on uh, into the world to represent Cosin. So, anybody else before we put it up for a vote? Uh, do I have a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. And the second? Second. Uh, could you call for a vote, please, Ms. Reimers? Mm -hmm. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passed 7 0. Thank you very much. Next up, approval of the PCPS Capital Improvement Plan for fiscal year 15 through 19. Yes, after just talking about our poor bu budget situation, but each year we do bring forward a capital improvement plan to you, and those that are watching from home um, should be seeing it on the screen. Uh, we have provided a reading file with this, and we did present this capital improvement plan to you at your work session last month. This is um, the same plan that we brought forward to you last year. We did um, have the opportunity to purchase a bus uh, with the help of the city for uh, the current year, so that was helpful for us in terms of our capital improvement plan. What, of course, is of great note is the center of it where you see the comprehensive facility study completed. Um, we did complete that study. We presented that to the school board last year as well as to city council. Um, and we continue to uh, discuss issues related to the middle school in terms of its needs. 
What we are doing is leaving it um, as a in a holding pattern right now, in part because as we approach 2016, we know we're going to have to have some discussion about the potential of consolidating schools if our enrollment decline continues as it is now projected to continue. If we do determine that we're going to consolidate schools, it may impact the work that we plan to do on the middle school because as you remember when we talked about school consolidation, the school consolidation committee that met two years ago, which was made up of community members as well as um, city staff and and school division staff determined that the primary school would be the likely school for um, closure if we were to go to consolidate but we might need to do some additional work then at the middle school so again we are tracking our numbers we won't make any decisions related to that um, for a couple more years but the 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 right thing to do is as we look at the middle school is to make sure we're making the right decisions. All the other items on your capital improvement plan here have been moved forward from last year. You will note that the primary school we do anticipate needing HVAC work as well as roof work just as any house that we own. After a number of years we need to repair our roofs and that is true of our school buildings as well. Um, under the high school you see the track um, fixes as well as an HVAC and roof work for that building. Again, typical that we would need to do in our homes. We've got to do those updates and repairs in our school buildings as well. And then you see the bus replacement schedule. Um, we have, still have a number of buses that um, are quite old. Over tw We've got 20 year old buses in our fleet. The replacement cycle that the state now funds is a 15, 15 year replacement cycle. It went up from a 12 year replacement cycle. As you know, we often replace our cars sooner than 15 years, but um, that is where we are with our bus replacement cycle. So with that said, I'm recommending approval of the CIP as it's being brought forward to you. As you know, we talked at the um, work session about the CIP have been in um, contact and had discussions with the city manager. Um, so we are in agreement that we should bring this forward. Um, then the city will incorporate into their CIP knowing that we're in the holding pattern on the middle school. Also knowing that we are challenged with our budget as we've said on a couple of occasions this evening as is the city. They've been helping us tremendously with our operating budget so that we could um, manage not to make as many reductions as we otherwise would have. So we know that likely items on the CIP may not be funded, those that are listed for the next fiscal year, but the community needs to recognize the issues that we face in terms of our facilities. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have a motion to approve the CIP for fiscal year 15 through 19? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions there? <coughs> Comments? Thank you. Could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. The vote is passed 7 to 0. Next up, consideration of approval of the first reading and move to second reading, change to policy manual section 7-2.3, student attendance and absences slash truancy, Dr. Parrish. Yes, as we always do, we um, look carefully at our policy as well as our current practices. And recently in looking at it, we realized that within our policy on student attendance, we have a small section there about makeup work. Um, but it was not updated when the makeup work was updated in the student handbook, which um, you actually as a board vote on every June before we publish that. Um, so I'm recommending that we remove the section on makeup work out of your board policy because it is in the student handbook under your uh, the attendance information in the handbook. And because you um, vote on that every June, if you do at some point determine you want to change the makeup policy of the school division, you can do that as we adjust the handbook. Um, and we know that you'll look at that annually, whereas you might not look at this exact section of policy annually. So reading, bringing to you first reading of that policy um, and asking that you move that policy to second reading so then you would vote on that in January. But again, remember you look at the student handbook again in June in terms of makeup practices. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve first reading and movement to second reading? So moved. And the second? Second. Any questions there? Just FYI, the last sentence of the second paragraph of the section below that makes reference to it, so you can uh, so take yeah, that thank out you. as well. We'll have to um, strike that as well. Thanks. Yeah. Nice catch, Ms. Rollins. I read it. <laughs> 
Yeah, we appreciate that. I did. It's focused on strike throughs. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else? Call for a vote, please, Ms. Rymers. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Mr. Cass? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Vote passes 7-0. Thank you. And public comment, Dr. Parrish, should you kick us off, please? Yes. Um, first of all, I want to join you in thanking um, the Procosin Education Foundation for their donation tonight, but for the thousands of dollars they've donated to our schools in the past five years during very challenging times. They've, they've made a real difference for our teachers and for our students. Um, and I think uh, it certainly aligns well that we have community members out there um, doing community service for us, and our students are turning around and giving back to our community. So I've always said that um, Procosin is very special because of the community service that goes on and we certainly demonstrated that this evening I just want to echo what mr. Bowen said um, that tomorrow at 9 o'clock is a big moment for us um, as the governor will be releasing his budget and again to echo what he said um, we'll get detailed information from the Department of Education after the bud the governor's release so we will not likely um, or not likely we will not have specific information as to what it means for our school division until we get into January especially because we've got winter break in between there but at your next board meeting um, we'll certainly be able to give you a presentation as to what the governor's budget means um, Everybody does need to remember that that's the governor's budget. Then we need to see what um, the General Assembly members um, propose to do as they all work through the budget process. But um, we will remain optimistic that we'll maybe see some more support for K-12 education in, in the budget release in the coming day and potentially as we move through the winter. But um, we're certainly hopeful that we won't see the cuts we've seen in the last six years. Also, just a couple hours ago, I met with the Secretary of Education, um, Secretary Holton, as well as with Delegate Helsel and a few teachers from um, another local school division, and I just wanted to thank them publicly for both um, the support that both of them are providing our schools. Our conversation focused on um, the assessment that we do with um, some of our students with disabilities and the challenges that we face with some of those students, and so we're optimistic that um, she will probably likely have some conversations in Richmond to see as we work with the federal government if we can change some of those assessment and accountability requirements that are coming um, from the federal government as part of the um, No Child Left, Child Left Behind Act. And also, um, as you will not be surprised, I cannot go in a meeting with um, anybody from the Richmond area and not discuss budget, so I certainly voiced um, my concern for budget, both in terms of us needing resources for our school, we need to stop making the cuts, but also that we need to find ways to um, support our teachers and staff, and certainly one of those areas would be an increase in compensation. So it was it was a very good meeting, though. and. Finally, I just hope that everyone out there has a wonderful, wonderful winter break. Enjoy the two weeks while we have it because Labor Day will come a little bit later in the year next year, and so we won't anticipate a two-week break next year, but certainly it will be nice this year. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sophie. All right. So at the primary school, two weeks ago, all the first graders traveled to Yorktown Victory Center as part of their Colonial Life Social Studies Unit. The students enjoyed a walking tour of Yorktown to discover how many Americans lived in the past. Last night, the kindergarten students performed for their families a selection of seasonal songs, one of which we heard tonight. Uh, PES said they're just winding down for the holidays, but they wish everyone a happy holiday. And at PMS on Thursday night, December 18th, there will be a parent informational meeting for the Governor's School for Science and Technology pre-admission. The meeting is at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Pocosin Middle School will hold its spelling bee on Wednesday, January 7th at 2.30 in the auditorium. Go online or see your English teacher for a permission slip. PMS teachers and staff would like to thank the PTO for their luncheon and holiday cookie swap held this week. And they wish everyone a safe and happy winter break, and they'll see you January 5th. And then at the high school, uh, applications are currently being accepted for the academic programs that are offered through Virginia's Summer Residential Governor School. 27 out of 44 students made all district chorus, 61% of the students. PHS ranked the third highest percentage of students obtaining this honor out of 17 other auditioning high schools. 
To date, the following percentages of students have obtained status of one of the honor rolls that are issued. 58% of 9th graders, 65% of 10th graders, 66% of 11th graders, and 71% of 12th, 12th graders. Uh, Alda Chrisman is in the PHS nominee for the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Conference, and Justin Bias is the PHS runner-up for this program. Shalni Kumar is the PHS nominee for the UVA, UVA Jefferson Scholar. Kalani Morgan is the PHS nominee for the DAR Citizenship Award. Scott Porter is the PHS nominee for the Pamplin Virginia Tech Scholarship. Joyce Chow and Tyler Moore are the PHS nominees for the ASMC Scholarship. And as for sports, all the winter sports have just started matches and games and meets. Although this is only the beginning of the season, everyone is off to a great start. So, Thank you, I believe. Uh, yes, we're the girls' basketball team is three and two, and we have our next game tomorrow. Great. So Outstanding. Fun. Congratulations. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, uh, Miss Sidner had to leave to make uh, the Cosin holiday concert. She has her youngest, who is a senior this year, playing in the band, and she does not want to miss her last holiday concert with a uh, child in the band. So, well done. Yeah. yeah. Miss Rollins, you're up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Colley, for your information about the uh, opportunities for service projects that our kids are involved in. That, that's, I love hearing about that, especially Heifer International, which is a very worthwhile organization. I hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday. <coughs> Remember the reason that we have this holiday, I think, is, uh, what's the child's name? Andrea, yes, um, reminded us about peace on earth. I think it's important that we remember that. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hux. Thank you, Dr. Carter. No comment tonight. Ms. Whitaker. Just like to thank the children for coming tonight and giving us this wonderful performance. Um, and thank the teacher and Ms. Poto who uh, organized this and, and did a great job with the kids. And I also just like to wish everybody a uh, happy holiday season and a happy new year. And um, party responsibly and make sure that you buckle up. Thank you. I had to get that in there. Thank sorry. you, ma'am. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Melton. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go home tonight and rewatch the uh, video, and I'm going to try to learn the reindeer pokey. So, <laughs> uh, I had the uh, chance to go uh, to the school board training in uh, Williamsburg, and I'll tell you, I heard a quote from our 2014 Virginia Teacher of the Year. It was Melissa Porforino. I hope I got that right. She said something very important, that teaching is the one profession that makes all other professions possible. My goodness, what a quote. And what our teachers do for our children and what they have done for each of us in this room is we would not be where we were today without great teachers. So teaching is the one profession that makes all other professions possible. And hope everyone has a happy holiday. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cass. Happy holidays, everyone. That is. All right. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Melton, uh, to kind of piggyback on your quote, uh, if you ask somebody who was the MVP from the 2012 World Series or who won the Stanley Cup in, in 1980, most people would not be able to answer those questions. But you, if you ask them uh, who's your favorite teacher, somebody immediately pops into your mind. So sure. there, there's. Teachers make a difference, they really do. They change people's lives uh, for the better. So we, for that, we appreciate it. Uh, had the opportunity to go hear the middle school course the other night, and Ms. Turo did a wonderful job as her uh, first year at Cosin Middle School as the course teacher. She had huge, huge shoes to fill, and seems like she's off to a good start because uh, those kids did a great job. And uh, with that, just uh, I hope everybody has a very, very safe holiday. And I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, or an otherwise generic non-denominational winter break. <laughs> How about that? And do we have any communications or other matters? We do not. Any material for board review? No. 
So we will adjourn to our work session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.